This is Chapter 3, Stoichiometry, Calculations with Chemical Formulas and Equations. This is the first lecture for this chapter and we'll cover starting at Section 4 of the book in Chapter 3. Um, this lecture will cover moles and some of their calculations. So in previous chemistry class, you sh hopefully have gone over and learn some introductory in, introductory information on the mole and Avogadro's number. So this is going to go through and rediscuss that, remind you of what it's about, um, and then get into some of the calculations. So Avogadro's number and the mole. To be able to count large numbers of atoms and molecules easier, chemists have developed the unit of the mole. Because if we're talking about atoms, they're so small that they're really hard to count. We're not going to try and sit and count them individually. And we need a way to figure out how much chemicals we need to use in reactions and how much product we're going to get out of a reaction. So they needed an easier way to count the atoms. So a mole is the counting unit for the number of atoms, ions, or molecules in a laboratory sized sample. So when we're dealing with a um, in lab experiment, this is the, the good unit to use. We abbreviate it MOL, we just drop the E. It's not much of an abbreviation, but it's what we've got. Um, they discovered the mole um, through calculation and experiment. So it's derived from the number of atoms in an exactly 12 gram sample of pure carbon-12. So the isotope carbon-12 with its six protons and six neutrons, they had a pure sample of it and took 12 grams of carbon-12 um, and were able to determine from that mass, knowing the mass of the isotope and the mass of the total mass of the sample, that that sample contained um, 6.022-1421 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Um, we round this number to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd and this is known as Avogadro's number. Um, Amadeo Avogadro was the scientist who did some work in this area and it was named after him. So in 12 grams of carbon-12 they will, were able to find that there were 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. And because it's based on its molar mass or its mass from the periodic table, um, we have used that to then figure out that a mole can be equal to the molar mass for any atom on the periodic table. Um, so when we're talking about a mole, it's the number of atoms or molecules um, in that sample. So per mole. Um, the pictures over here on the side say give you an idea of kind of how this works. So if we have 12 grams of carbon, then we have that 6.0, it should say 22. So the typo there, um, times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If we have a mole of something else, it doesn't matter what the substance is. If I have a mole of paper hearts, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd paper hearts. If I was to multiply this and say I have two moles of something, then it just multiplies that number, 12.046 times 10 to the 23rd is the same as two moles. So we can um, use that relationship to help us find out how many atoms or molecules there are of something. So the mole can be applied to molecules and ions as well as um, individual atoms. So if I was to look at something like a chemical like calcium carbonate, if I had a mole of calcium carbonate, um, that means I have 6.02 times or 022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in the sample. We say formula units because calcium carbonate is an ionic compound. So instead of, we, it's not really a molecule, it doesn't have those um, covalent bonds. So it has a salt structure, like a crystal structure. So we say um, we have um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd sets of CaCO3, those um, formula units. 
Um, we can even extend this to say that in this sample, we have one mole of calcium because there's one calcium um, atom in that formula unit. We have one mole of carbon in there, and we have three moles of oxygen atoms in there. So um, we can say that we have 6.02 times 7 to the 23rd atoms of calcium carbon, and we have three times that amount for oxygen, so 18.06 for oxygen. You can do the same thing with um, a covalent compound or molecule. So, so if we had a mole of water, it has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in the sample. We say that one is molecules because it's covalently bonded. So it's just some of the terminology that's a little bit different. When we're talking about ionic, we say formula units. When we're talking about covalent, we talk about molecules because that's what a molecule is. It's a covalent bond. All right. So um, we talked a little bit about this uh, in class, but molar mass is very similar to um, the formula um, weight that we discussed in class. So um, when we have a mole sample of a chemical, we can easily find the mass of that sample by placing it on a balance. So if I had a, measured out a mole of something, um, I could find its mass by putting it on balance. If, I, if the sample was, for instance, water, um, and I had a mole of water, I could put it on balance, and it would show that that water has a mass of 18 grams. So that's what molar mass is. It's the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. So anytime we have a mole of something and we find its mass, that is its molar mass. Um, the calculation of molar mass is the exact same calculation um, as formula weight. So, except the mass is measured in grams per mole instead of atomic mass units, AMU. Um, this is because instead of cal calculating the mass of just the compound, the individual atoms, we are calculating the mass of a mole of that compound. So, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd um, molecules or sets of that compound. So, we have lots more atoms and uh, molecules there, so our mass is going to be bigger. Instead of atomic mass units, we'll use grams. So if we were to calculate the molar mass of water, we would take um, the number of atoms to hydrogen times its molar mass and add it to... Alright, so we're going to add that to our molar mass of oxygen and the calculation will look like this. So we have two times our one gram per mole for the molar mass of hydrogen. We get that from our periodic table, plus our 16 gram per, grams per mole for our oxygen. Um, and we end up with 18 grams per mole for water. Um, for our calculations for now, we will be rounding to one decimal place on our molar masses. Um, it'll make it a little easier so we're getting consistent results on that. Alright, so let's look at how some of these mole relationships actually compare to kind of get a, a better idea of how the mole works for atoms, molecules, compounds, that, that sort of thing. So, um, if we have something like an atom of nitrogen, its formula weight would be 14.0 atomic mass units from our periodic table. Its molar mass would be 14.0, but it's, and that would be grams per mole. Um, so if we're talking about one mole of nitrogen, just nitrogen atoms, then we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen atoms. Now, if we were to talk about molecular nitrogen, so nitrogen is one of the diatomic elements that comes in pairs with N2. If we have two of them, then that's going to double our formula weight to 28 atomic mass units and our molar mass to 28 grams per mole. And this is how we could discuss how many atoms or, or molecules are there. We could say we have a mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, of nitrogen molecules, or we could say that we have two times that mole, or 12.04 uh, times 10 to the 23rd, nitrogen atoms. So we either have a mole of nitrogen molecules or two moles of nitrogen atoms. So it can break down either way. It depends on what we're looking for. 
Um, similar thing with something with, between atoms and ions. So if you have individual atoms um, or individual ions, your mass is going to be the same for molar mass and for formula weight. Um, and we would compare them the same way. If we have a mole of silver atoms, it's the same as a mole of silver ions. The biggest thing here is when we have an ion, it's lost an electron for a positive ion. So it, we would think that if it's a losing an electron, it would lose mass. But it does say down here in our star, recall that electron has negligible mass, meaning that mass is so small that it doesn't even affect it. It's that significant figures that electron doesn't really ma have enough mass to register. So it doesn't affect our formula weight or our molar mass of those ions. If we were talking about a, a compound like barium chloride, we could calculate its formula weight, atomic mass units, its molar mass in grams per mole. And we could talk about the um, individual pieces um, of it as well. So we could say we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd barium chloride formula units, or um, like sets of that compound. Or we could look at the individual atoms within that, or ions within that. So there's a mole of barium ions and two moles of chloride ions. So we can, we can use these numbers, these subscripts, and their formulas to really explore how much of a substance we have um, and relate that back to the mole. All right, so it's great when we have simple numbers, like we're multiplying a mole by one or two, um, things like that, but it gets a little more complex when we have some weird numbers. So we have to be able to convert between moles and mass and Avogadro's number and, um, and um, volume as well. So we're going to walk through those steps. So looking at masses and moles, one of the most frequent calculations that will be done in this class is in, I can say in every unit, I think we do, <laughs> almost every unit, is the conversion between mass and moles and moles and mass. So grams to moles and moles to grams. Um, since one mole of chemical is equal to its molar mass, we can write this equality as a conversion factor um, and then use dimensional analysis to calculate new values. So if we look at this example, it says how many moles are represented by 82 grams of barium chloride. So we would set up, look at our question. We are looking for moles in this question and we are given 82 grams of barium chloride. So, of course, we write down our given first, 82 grams BACL2. We set up our railroad tracks, our conversion, and we want to get rid of the barium the grams of barium chloride. Now, you will notice I'm not only just putting units, the grams, but I'm also putting the chemical. You need to get into this habit because when we get into the full stoichiometry problems, I will expect you write the chemicals. Otherwise, you will get lost in the problem. Um, if you got into bad habits last year, uh, you better start your good habits now, so get used to it. Um, so we want to get rid of our grams of barium chloride, and we want to get moles. So we change from grams to moles, and we put the molar mass in for our conversion. So 208.2 grams of barium chloride is its molar mass, and it's grams per mole, so in one mole. So these two things are an equality. And of course, we this is our conversion factor. Um, so it's how those two things are equal. 2.082 grams is equal to a mole. And then we can cancel out our grams of barium chloride. And we do our multiplication and division. Multiply by 1, divide by 208.2. And we will get 0.39 moles of barium chloride. So we can look at this and say, OK, there's two significant figures here. Um, so we have to round our, and this has four significant figures, so we need to round to two significant figures on this, okay? So, that's our basic setup for going from grams to moles of a substance. Um, if we want to go from moles to grams, it's a similar setup. We're just flipping our conversion factor around. Um, your grams end up on top and your moles end up on the bottom, along with our numbers. Okay, we're going to look at an example of that now. So it says, 
What is the mass in grams of 6.33 moles of sodium bicarbonate? Sodium bicarbonate is um, the chemical that it's what chalk is made of. Um, there's a lot of things out there that use sodium bicarbonate. Um, lots of sea creatures, their shells are made of that. So, just for reference. Um, I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video for a minute. Try this one out. Um, come back and check it. Alright, so hopefully you've paused the video and, and tried it out. So, for this question, we were given, or we're looking for the mass in grams of our substance, and um, we were given 6.33 moles of sodium bicarbonate. So we want to always write down our given first. 6.33 moles of sodium bicarbonate. Again, we're writing down the units and the chemical. Mole is a unit. Um, and we want to get rid of the moles of sodium bicarbonate. So those are going to go on the bottom. And it's one mole of that. In one mole, there are 84.0 grams of sodium bicarbonate. So this is the molar mass added up from sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and three oxygen. And then we can cancel out our, or get our conversion factor. So this is how these two things are equal. And we can cancel out our moles of sodium bicarbonate and then do our math. So we multiply across the top, divide by one. So we end up with 532 grams of sodium bicarbonate. This has three significant figures as well as this, so we can get three significant figures in our answer. And again, we want to report our units and our substance in the answer as well. So this shows us if we have more than one mole of something, how many grams that is, or um, we can also use this to figure out how many atoms or molecules that is, which leads us into these. So converting masses and number of particles. So we know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules and is also equal to molar mass. So it's possible to convert from mass to the number of particles. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit longer type of question. Um, the question says, how many atoms are in three gram in a three gram sample of copper? So if I hand you three grams of copper, we can calculate how many atoms are actually contained in that sample. Um, so looking at a question, we're looking for atoms, the number of atoms, and we're given three grams of copper. So again, our given, we write down first, three grams of copper. This is going to take two steps to do this question because we do not have a direct relationship between grams and number of atoms. We have to go through the mole. The mole is like our bridge to everything else. So we're going to first go from grams to moles. So a, um, an, the formula weight of copper is 63.5 grams, um, or excuse me, the molar mass of copper, 63.5 grams per mole, so in one mole of copper. So that allows us to change from grams of copper to moles of copper. So we get our conversion factor there. And then we can cancel out our number of grams of copper. And now those units are gone. Our numbers are not gone, but the units are. And now we can change, look at focus in on our moles and change those into what we want. We want atoms. So we're going to get rid of our moles of copper. And in one mole, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. Right? So from here, that creates our conversion factor again. So these two things are equal to each other. These two things are equal to each other. Anytime two things are equal to each other, you can set them up in this fraction and use them to convert. Um, so this allows us to cancel out moles of copper for each of those. And then we can do our math. We're going to have 3 times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Divide the whole thing by 63.5 and 1. So when we do that math, you do want to be careful when entering your scientific notation into your calculator. Um, if you're stuck on how to use your calculator, I recommend checking YouTube. They probably have some tutorial videos, but just be careful when entering that stuff. So when we do our math, we should end up with 2.8 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of copper. 
Um, when we're looking at our significant figures, the part that's significant is in front of the times 10 to the 22nd. So 2.8 is the part that's significant. We have two sig figs, um, which are 3.0 is our lowest number of sig figs. So we're going to deal with that because these are both relationships. All right. So any 3 gram sample, we can see we have less than a mole of atoms there um, because we're less than 6.02. So you can start to see how this, these relationships really work when we do these math problems. All right, there's one more relationship to look at. Um, we'll get to on the next one. It says this requires two fact. Um, I do want to go back to this. So this question requires the two conversion factors again because there's no direct conversion between mass and atoms. We don't know how much how many atoms there are in this mass, or else we could do it in one step. Um, and the reason we don't have that conversion is because every chemical has its own mass. So we can't say that three grams um, is always a certain number of atoms because it depends on the type of atom we're talking about. All right, the last, the last one we're gonna look at is moles and volume. So, um, when we're dealing with moles and volume, we deal with gases. So the volume of a gas is much easier to measure than its mass due to its properties. So it's kind of hard to find mass of a gas, but it's very convenient to find the volume of a gas. Um, and it's actually more useful for us to have the volume of a gas rather than its mass because volume is what plays into all of our gas laws and our calculations with those. So we use molar volume to relate moles of a gas to its volume. Um, molar volume is tells us that one mole of a gas, doesn't matter what the gas is, um, at STP is equal to 22.4 liters. And what does that mean to us? So that means, well, we have STP is one thing we have to define here. So STP means standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. Okay. Um, and standard pressure is one atmosphere of pressure. So we say that a mole of a gas at STP is 22.4 liters. We have to define that STP, that standard temperature and pressure, because if we change the temperature or change the pressure of this gas, then a mole of that gas is not taking up 22.4 liters. We have to change the number. So um, it has been found that it, if we have a mole of gas at that temperature and pressure, then it will take up the space of 22.4 liters, which is not too much space. Um, so it's it's about a cube that's a little over a foot on each side. So you can imagine kind of how big that is. So let's look at an example of how this works in a problem. Um, so when we're converting between moles and volume, it's made simple, very simple by using this value. So says, how many liters of gas is there in 6.33 moles of O3 at STP? So O3, if you're not familiar with it, is called ozone. Um, you probably recognize it by that name. Sorry, I Sorry about that. This is Bill. Um, so ozone, O3, is, of course, our chemical that's in our atmosphere that we need to keep us from sunburning all the time. Um, so when we have 6.33 moles of ozone at standard temperature and pressure, we want to know how many liters that takes up. What's its volume? So, of course, we're going to set up our problem. We're going to write down our given first 6.33 moles of oxygen, or excuse me, of ozone, O3. We want to get rid of moles of O3, so those go on the bottom. And we want to convert to liters. Well, our conversion factor it tells us that one mole of a gas at STP, which it defines that we are at STP, is 22.4 liters. So at the top, we're going to have 22.4 liters of O3. So anytime we're dealing with liters, we can use this. Now, this only works for liters of gas. You cannot use this for liquids. It does not work, or solids. So this only works for gases. So when we do our calculation, we have 6.33 times 22.4, and we would get... 
sorry, I get, keep getting interrupted. So <laughs> we're going to calculate our answer, and we will end up with 142 liters. Um, again, we want to round to three significant figures for our answer, so 142 liters of ozone, O3. So um, there, as you can see, there are a couple of different ways to relate different values to the mole and how we can use those. So all of these calculations right now are just relating um, one substance and changing it from between the different units um, and moles. Um, we will get into the actual stoichiometry stuff where we change it from one chemical to another chemical using that balanced equation. Mm -hmm. that will come a next. visual. Um, to, um, this chart kind of gives you a visual of how these things relate together. So the mole is the center of what our universe is right now um, for chemistry, and a mole can relate to our three different values. We can relate it to mass using our molar mass. So if we need to get from moles to grams, we're going to use molar mass. Um, we can relate moles to the number of atoms or molecules of a substance, depending on what the substance is. So if it's talking about copper atoms, then we want to say atoms. If it's talking about water, then we say water molecules. Um, and we use Avogadro's number to get between moles and um, atoms or molecules. And then we can also relate it to volume um, at STP course it needs to be specified that it's at STP so we can go between moles and that with and volume with the 22.4 liters um, you can see that two of them two out of three here are very specific numbers molar mass is the one that's going to be varying um, depends on the chemical we're using because every chemical has its own molar mass but we can use this to kind of see what our path is for solving some of these problems so if we're given something um, so say we are given a volume of gas and we want to know how much that volume weighs without having to... Uh, sorry, these bells. Um, so if we want to be able to find um, the volume of a gas in grams without having to weigh it, we can calculate. So we could change volume into moles and then moles into grams. Um, as long as we have the chemical formula, of course, we can use molar mass. So we can relate these all to each other. Our bridge here, though, that we have to go through is the mole. So that's our, always our middle step. Um, so hopefully that helps in either reminding you about what the mole is about or introducing it to you. I do suggest you take a look at the chapter. It's always helpful. Um, the, the next section in our chapter, we've it should be section four. We'll go through the basic mole calculations. They don't include the volume one yet, but I did want to go ahead and introduce that to you guys because we can go ahead and use that. Um, so that's the end of this lecture. And next, you're working on your assignment that goes with it. Have a great weekend.